Hey, this is Nick, the Mining Book Guy. Today is the evening of Wednesday, February 7th, 2018. As you can see, I've got a Sarama Resources video for you. That's SWA on the TSXV. While I am completely independent from the company, I bought all my shares on the market. Uh, to some of you, it may seem I almost work for them because this is my third video over the course of a couple years. I have traded the stock a bit. I, I uh, did sell quite a few shares in the middle of last year, uh, but always owned a core position. Bought a bunch back at the end of the year. Last year was kind of frustrating, but uh, I don't want to dwell on that too much in this video. Two main things here. One, there are very clear reasons to discuss Sarama right now. Pretty exciting stuff in just the last few weeks. Top priority there. And uh, I also want to touch a little bit on some past things and, and some possible negatives and uncertainty, but this is going to lead into at least one more video, if not a few more. I do want to be more on top of Sarama in 2018, and the main reason why is this could be the year that everything finally comes together. So let's get into a little bit of that. We're going to start at CEO.ca. Now, this is ridiculously cheap in my opinion though again there are there are some caveats um, some things to be con a, a little concerned about uh, today's actually been a pretty good day you can see I, I have CEO dot um, CEO pro which you know just a shameless plug I don't work for CEO.ca but you should consider it because the market depth is awesome and uh, with Sarama trading at about 11 or trading at 11 cents right now, Market cap, 15.5 million Canadian, fully diluted. It's uh, closer to 18 million. It's cheaper than it was a year ago, even though they've made quite a bit of progress. And the main reason I'm on the CEO.ca page is that there's a smart guy here uh, at Dirt Diggler. People at CEO.ca know, know his handle and that he's a savvy trader. I was happy with a little bit of posting to get Dirk a little bit interested in this. And he even mentioned that stateside. Another savvy poster at CEO.ca uh, drew Dirk's attention to Sarama Resources. But the thing is, almost nobody talks about this besides me. And I don't want to be known as a Sarama guy. I want <laughs> I want more people to be interested. And it's it's been an issue for Sarama for a long time. You know, the la the retail has been a big weakness. Uh, I try to build things up so you know. Part, this video is partially to go in that direction, but thankfully there's a lot of good stuff for us to talk about. Uh, but before before I get into all those, I'll, I'll go really quickly. Uh, there's the, I don't like Stockhouse much at all anymore. I actually said some good things last year. I feel like the site has so many issues. It's it's CEO.ca is getting better, Stockhouse is getting worse, but there are still a few good posters there. There is one person here, Treetop2. Uh, who made actually a very good post just uh, yesterday, I think, that he or she, I'll assume, he, we'll just assume he for now, um, that no one's talking about Sarama. I totally agree. I actually agree with everything in this post. I think it's even neat that he was interested in West African uh, for a long time and is just getting interested in Sarama now. Um, I somewhat regret not having bought West African Resources. That's WAF, uh, also on, on the venture uh, or actually, I think it might be on the TSX, but no matter. Um, West African uh, has been a huge Burkina success story, but even someone not on CO.ca seems like a smart person is picking up on this. So I'm going to explain why I think it's great that a few people are showing interest, but why so many more of you should really be showing interest right now. All of the links I'm going to show you are in the notes below. So if you if this is the only thing you get out of the video, you should definitely scan these links for themselves, or for sorry, scan the links for yourself, uh, because looking at juniors is about should be about people doing their own research, and I'm just trying to be the bridge to to I mean of course I'm promoting the stocks I own, but I really am trying to be the bridge so that you can figure out if this is value for yourself. A golden opportunity for fresh discoveries. Mining Journal article from January 25th. 
so just a couple weeks ago. On one hand, I think this article is a little complicated as a as kind of an intro to the company. On another, it's a really good piece to talk about the value at Bondi and the 3B projects. And it did hint at um, something that did end up happening just this last week on the Banfora belt. So I definitely recommend you look at this. This is going to be even more valuable to people who have at least followed the story a bit over the last um, year or two. But something that's much easier to understand, and this, this is where the ball gets rolling. So Savory Gold, which is SCA on the venture, unfortunately it sounds a little too much like Sarama, but you know it's, it's a competing junior and they even have a JV together. Well, Savory got a $2 million, uh, uh, Canadian dollar strategic investment from Semifo, who I've not mentioned in previous videos much at all, but this is this is potentially a game changer because Semifo has all sorts of interesting exploration land. They are like kind of the kings of Burkina Faso, but this shows they want to to get more involved in the consolidation early exploration side of this belt, this southern southern part of the Hyundai belt, where they basically, their cornerstone is at the northern part of the belt. So on its own, this is a big deal. I actually bought shares of Savory on this news. Uh, I think I'll go into Savory more in a future video. But for now, in the PowerPoint, please keep in mind that Savory only has this property, they own roughly 70% of it. Sarama owns the other 30%. And the, the most valuable thing that I haven't mentioned in previous videos is that this middle area, so this all of this on the left side is Karen Caso, the Savory, and Sarama JV. This whole middle area is Semifo. And it's been a big frustration for both Savory and Sarama to not be able to get a deal with Semifo on this area. But what this is showing is that Semifo likely is, is going to hold on to this and maybe they're going to eventually want all the things around it. This isn't so much about Semifo choosing Savory over Sarama. I, I'll, and I'll have a little more to say about that as well. But Semifo is becoming a player. That's what the strategic investment means. It's, a, it's an important signal. So Savory, good company. I own a bit of it. But this other news emphasizes why I, one of a bunch of reasons why I like Sarama much better than Savory. This came just at the end of last week. Sarama establishes a new 600 kilometer square kilometer exploration position at Kumandara. And there's some good details here. You can immediately tell this isn't this is a greenfields project for sure, but there has been some drilling done. And the most valuable thing is to see the picture. So you can see here that it's an entirely different belt, the Banfora belt. This is where the main action is. This green is savory. All this other stuff, you know, Sarama on its own, savory Sarama, and this is now a hundred percent Sarama as well, with with a couple minor complications with the JVs. What's neat in this image is that it's taken Sarama a while to consolidate this, but you can tell that there's been some successful drilling here. This is the initial Sarama owned area. There was a little bit of success here from some drilling done when it was a JV between Semifo and OzQuest, a little ASX junior. I'll get into that in a second, but this whole area is perhaps the most perspective. And I think it took Sarama a while to piece it all together. But um, I'm excited that, you know, potentially they can do some drilling this season and that the market doesn't realize, you know, there could be some immediate high grade hits here or there could be a big system that was kind of missed by Semaphone. And this is some stuff that a lot of people aren't aware of. This is 
the same trend going back to May 14th, 2015, when OzQuest was JV'd, was, Semifo was earning into the property, and you can see this roughly 30 kilometer Moro trend was basically discovered through auger drilling. Now, nothing has really changed here except that Semifo did spend um, six or seven million Australian dollars in 2015 trying to drill this out. Now, the thing is, this is key. You know, like Semifo had this big program, but they spread it around to multiple properties. And I personally don't think they did this justice here. I'm sure Sarama feels exactly the same way. But you can tell just from this image, which uh, Sarama didn't show, all these yellow dots are artisanal workings. And that in itself is very positive. Because, um, you know, from talking to some smart people who've done work in Africa, one of the best ways to find a new gold mine is to drill, to follow the artisanal workers and drill where, um, you know, they're looking for gold, drill under or next to where they're doing it. So I just think this has been under the radar for such a long time. Uh, again, I think I'll go into more detail in a future video about exactly why Semifo has kind of ignored this or why they have other priorities. But that's the key here. It's not like they've given this, you know, a full run and then just passed on uh, the uh, properties to Sarama. I think they haven't done justice to the prospectivity. And very importantly, I think there's enough value here as 100% owned properties. You could easily make the argument that this project on its own, and sorry, I should go back to um, this image, you know, this project for Sarama on its own worth the current market cap, maybe, maybe not quite, you know, 15 or 18 million Canadian, but this is a really interesting project on its own. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I am very happy as a shareholder that this got picked up and I think it's going to be really exciting. It's going to rejuvenate some interest in Sarama on its own, but it's not the only thing that's happening. Because uh, literally just the day before that announcement, and, and this is, this like a lot of people, they don't realize what I just said happened last week. What happened with Savory, with the strategic investment from Semifo, that happened last week. And these great drill results from Taranga at Golden Hill also happened last week. It's like, whoa, like if you're not paying attention, like something is heating up here in uh, this part of Burkina Faso. And... There's, there's a lot of details here. I guess the important thing is you can tell these look like solid drill results. I have heard from a few people. They've got mixed feelings about this project. Um, you know, I feel like there's going to be a decent resource, but, you know, we'll see if it ends up hanging together well. But absolutely the most important thing, they've budgeted $8 million. I'm going to assume that's $8 million Canadian for this year's exploration program. That is huge in itself. You know it's not so much just about the results. Like Taranga is a mid-tier and they're willing to put so much more money into this. You know that they see something. They're not just going to throw money around. And so much of their presentation material shows how much they value Golden Hill. And this is their recent presentation from Indaba. Um, this, they, they actually do a great job making maps. And so I just want to focus in on this for a minute. Uh, you can see here this yellow thing is the whole Golden Hill project. My guess, once they have a resource um, estimate, uh, likely by the end of this year, a maiden resource, it's going to be something like 500,000 ounces, maybe up to a million, but it's going to be something significant. And it's surrounded by all this other stuff. Red here is um, the Hyundai project for Endeavor, uh, which I could, I, I'm actually not even talking much about it uh, in today's video, but that's a big signal in itself that uh, a few months ago, that flagship project for Endeavor Mining went into production. So right next door, so you, you see that's happening. Sarama is this, these, are these green properties. This one's actually the most valuable, Bondi, which I'll, I'll be discussing a little later. This, this blue one is actually Semifo. You can see that it matches up here. And down, down here is um, actually just, just to put this in perspective a little bit. I'm going back here. 
this little thing right here is exactly the same thing as this right here. So a lot of the pieces are coming together. Taranga is the mid-tier that's trying to kind of sneak in and steal stuff off of Semaphos territory. That's that's an interesting theme. I, I hadn't thought about that much until literally, you know, this week. I'm definitely going to come back to that. That's what makes things exciting. There's There's been a whole weird thing that happened between Acacia and Endeavor. Again, for another video, but... And, and that's hurt Sarama, um, especially from a perception standpoint. But what Teranga is doing and what Semifo doing, totally helping both Savory and Sarama. So those are like, you know, the two small juniors and the two mid-tiers. They're creating the excitement in this whole area. So I can't emphasize enough how important what's happening with Teranga is. By the way, that's a joint venture with Boss Resources, BOE on the ASX, which is worth a look of, you know, for people who... Like, to, you know, they'll still have 20% uh, of the project and they've got some, I think, uranium assets somewhere else. So it's something I, I follow a little bit. But Golden Hill's coming together and there's some good, you know, stuff in these slides. Something I'm following very closely. And um, again, the fact that the news came out last week along with that other news, very exciting. So um, you can scroll down to check out this PowerPoint. But, um, also, very importantly, Sarama just updated their PowerPoint uh, for Indaba happening this week, and I think a lot of people aren't aware of it. I'm going to scroll down a bit. There's some of this people have seen before, but there are a few key slides. By the way, you know, Sarama has a very solid team. I, I, I wish they just were a little better. Well, I wish they were, you know, kind of middle of the road on promotion. I feel like they really are in the poor level of promotion to retail, but you can't deny that they have a solid board and that they have very solid shareholders. So, you know, that's, I just, I just want to emphasize that. And the fact that they, they're the ones that grew Kabali, you know, with Moto Gold Mines that became the flagship deposit for Rand Gold. It really does. It, it is very meaningful, but you can see now you've got this main like big cluster, but you've got this very interesting, uh, you know, secondary project in Kumandara. Uh, I think it, it really does um, add a lot to the company. So a, a little more on Bondi here. So this th this is was overlooked by the market, but there was some some good drilling progress here. I'll, I'll show show you real quick a little later. But Batoro could be a really interesting property that's even that's very early stage. And Bamako has had some good results as well. You know, 15 years, 6.2. Um, Booney, even though it's closer, not as interesting, but you know, this is all a hundred percent owned. And I would make a very strong argument that these are more valuable than the entire Karen Caso JV with Savory and Sarama. Maybe more on that in a future video, but like this is all its own thing that they've brought together. And uh, I think it's really exciting. It fits if, if, if you're looking at this and you and you want to dig deeper. Don't forget this article because this article from the Mining Journal uh, fits in very well with the PowerPoint. Uh, but this is my favorite slide of all the new slides. I think it's very well done. There's a lot of info here, but notice, you know, this big section blown up right here, the Bonnie um, Shear Zone. I mean, I love this because up here, um, Sue and Mana, that's the flagship for um for Semifo, Yaramoko, Rockscold doing really well there. Uh, and and they have some uh, um, expansion going on. Hyundai Mine, which I was just talking about with Endeavor. And then Golden Hill, where I just talked about with Taranga. And then Bondi. And the market does not give Bondi close as much value as it deserves. And it's it's almost as if this is the most developed. And as you go down, it's it's not that we're expecting it to be at the same level as what's going on up here, but the potential is absolutely there. And this is a good slide for the layman to visualize it. And there's some good technical stuff here, which I'm sure I'll learn more about, but um, don't underestimate the power of this slide. And again, like the power of everything going on between the 3B project and Golden Hill. And going down here, these results um, at Jarkadugu. So I don't want to be confusing. I like to call this whole thing Bondi, even though this is the Bondi deposit. 
but on the same property, there were some very encouraging results that show there's a lot of potential here um, and, and this should be drilled within the next three to four months. So those slides are all great. Um, Kumandara, which I had mentioned earlier, is a new thing. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's so much going on that's really exciting. So it, it's a lot to take in, but the point was to show you so much news just happened and so much more will be happening. Now, to kind of wrap this up, I made this video uh, a little over a year ago. Unfortunately, a, a lot of things did not you know, pass as well as I hoped. That's why Sarama has been in the doldrums. But if you want another, um, you know, more points on Bondi and how important it is, I would say that's the best refresher for this video for people who've seen it. And it's probably the, the most relevant part to what's going on over the next six months with Sarama uh, in, t in terms of uh, value creation. So it's roughly 10 minutes into the video for, you know, five or 10 minutes. This is a long video. It's, it's, I know it's overwhelming for a lot of people, but I just want to emphasize again how important Bondi is and this 3B project, which is basically Bondi included with other 100% owned projects. Now, as, as negatives, Sarama has to raise money really soon. And I'm hoping it's not going to be dilutive. And it's the main reason I cannot um, I cannot with confidence tell you that you should buy the stock immediately and that it's going to re-rate higher. But I will say if that raise is minimally dilutive or you see some you know, positive names attached or whatever, um, it could immediately be a signal that you should get on board, especially at this 10 cent, 11 cent, 12 cent level if it's still trading here. Um, I think the, the stock should absolutely be above 15 cents, if not 20 cents. You know, it should be like a $30 million company. But, you know, I've been saying that for a while and there's there's been some issues there. It's just, it's it's one of the cheapest companies for the combination of the ounces in the ground where they, they have over 1.6 million attributable ounces. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's you're, you're buying cheap ounces in the ground, but you're also buying uh, like the exploration potential. And fortunately, they have the 100% owned Kumandara and they have the 3B projects. They have, they have the other stuff, you know, Karen Caso, there's going to be um, good things that happen. And the South Hyundai, there's, um, there's also going to be uh, probably some interesting things happening, but they don't have as much control there. So can't definitively tell you that you should go out and buy, but pay attention to the news. And it's a big reason I'm going to follow this up with another video at some point in the near future for sure. But I thought of one other thing. If you have any questions or you have comments, like the things you want to know, I do want to try to make this more interactive. If you're, if you're really interested in this company, please, um, you know, I encourage you even more to like make comments in the notes below this video. If you want me to go through any specific information on Sarama or you want me to compare it even to Savory, anything within this region of Burkina Faso is open. Like I, I will cover anything in this region in a future video. So I don't know if there's going to be that much interest out there, but I, but I really want to encourage it right now because I've got all this pent up energy and some frustration, but hopefully it can come out in a positive way because I, I do think this uh, company is on the cusp of things working out despite some negatives. I will go through, uh, I do have a plan to go through negatives or other things uh, if nobody has any comments. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you want to help provide me some direction in another video or, or I can just answer you in the notes below, please do write something. Um, I'd say in these YouTube notes is, is great. And you could also uh, write to me in the CEO.ca room. You know, we're going back to here. There's the Sarama room. So anyway, that's it for uh, this this segment. Um, keep your eye on Sarama resources. Keep your eye on, on Savory Gold and keep your eye on Taranga and Semifo. Lots of interesting stuff happening here. Lots of interesting stuff in West Africa in general. And um, I hope to have another video for you in the next month or so. 
if there, especially if there's some news. But um, thanks for listening. This was Nick the Mindy Book Guy. Talk to you soon. Bye.